that the sort of <laughs> heaviest oh directed by tom hanks oh interesting hey everybody and welcome to another movie night i'm jackie and today we are watching band of brothers episode five crossroads Again, this series continues to be absolutely spectacular. I don't think there's much I can say in praise of it that you don't already know. After this episode, we are halfway through the series, which is crazy to me. But you guys have also very graciously warned me which episodes I should make sure that I have tissues for. I feel like this entire series you should, but obviously there are a few that hit harder than others, so I am mentally preparing myself for those. I am not ready. But beyond that, all I can say is that I am thoroughly enjoying this heartbreaking series. It is absolutely spectacular. And so far, living up to the hype that you guys have given it, I have heard nothing but incredible things about this show. So I've been enjoying seeing that for myself. And I appreciate all of you recommending it, but also watching along with me. It has been such an incredible experience to be able to watch this with you guys. So I look forward to continuing. On that note, as always, Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, drop me a comment, let me know your thoughts on Band of Brothers, Redder is better, so hit what may or may not be a big red subscribe button depending on your browser, and check me out on Patreon for the full length version of this reaction as well as all of my other content. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, then the full length reactions to this entire season are already available on Patreon, so if you don't want to wait, go ahead and check those out. Links to my Instagram and other social media are in the description box below, so with all of that out of the way, Let's get into Band of Brothers, episode five. <sighs> Getting to know this music really well. What fresh torture, what new creative heartbreaks have they prepared for us today? It doesn't surprise me based on what you guys have told me that the heaviest tearjerker episodes are the latter half of the season. That doesn't surprise me at all. Later in the season, after we've established these characters and followed them the most and start getting into the climax of the season, I'm not surprised that the sort of <laughs> heaviest... Oh, directed by Tom Hanks. This episode is directed by Tom Hanks? Oh, interesting. But yeah, anyway, that's just my ramble. If you're a leader, you lead the way. Mm-hmm. Not just uh, on the easy ones, you take the tough ones, too. Mm -hmm. Seemed like he always made the right decisions along the way. Mm -hmm. He was a real soldier. Winters. You never thought of not being first or sending somebody in his place. Yeah. I don't know how he survived. <laughs> you like to think it's because he deserved to, but there's no rhyme or reason sometimes. Oh, dear. What is happening? Oh dear, perspective. Terrifying perspective. Oh my god. Well, shit. Let's go. Come on, you got 10 minutes. Oh, boy. Come on. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, let me alone. Okay. <gasps> Oh, that's my own piss, for Christ's sake! Get up next time. I mean, we're the only unit in the group that's got the Germans on the German side of the Rhine. Something to be said for that. Oh, Are you listening to me? Oh, Hang on at every word. <laughs> Guess the British lost 8,000 men when Market Garden fell on its ass, which... Still wait to write citations on that 5 October operation. I need your report. The report, yes, sir. Light a fire under it, Dick. Sir. Now, God damn it, we asked for this yesterday, and here it is today. A day late and a dollar short. <laughs> this man is stretched terribly thin. We're doing a lot of timeline jumping here. Are we seeing what happened in the report that he's writing? New guys giving the replacements the what for and why is. I swear one of them has never shaved. Yeah, <laughs> kids. Aww. Got anything on this? No. It's all quiet. We got Jesus. a pass Alley, sir, you need All right, pass. get him on the table. Oh. Yeah, it's Allie. No rest for the weary. This hey. All right, let's get this done quickly. We got to move. Not too much. Hey, Allie. All right. 
found a whole new style for this episode. Every single episode is different. Oh, why are they giving away their position? They ain't as smart as me and you. <laughs> if only. Well, we know he survives this because he's writing about it later, but that doesn't make me feel any better right now. <laughs> The cuts back and forth are actually increasing the tension. This is making me nervous in an entirely different way than any other episode has yet. Because everything is silent. The, we're just getting the foley and the guns always, but the tapping on the keyboard. Mortars deploy here. First squad on me. Go. On me. Always following him. He's always the first in. Second on the right. First on the right. Oh, is he assigning each person someone to shoot so they get all of them at once? That is an incredibly effective strategy. Great idea. How many crowds are left up there? I don't know. We got seven and one blow. Not too shabby. Go get that machine gun on the right side. Go! Push us <laughs> Oh my god! Fuck! Dukeman's down! Oh my god, the transition of gunfire to the tapping of the typewriter. Oh, this is so good. Oh. I know I say that every single episode, but it's so good. <laughs> I don't know why I'm still doing this. Want drinking? No, I didn't eat your footlocker. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Maybe this is a perfect place to stop drinking. Right here on the business end of the Allied Advance. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers to not drinking. <laughs> Dick, you know, that's not literature. You just keep it simple. Try writing in the first person plural, you know. Say we a lot. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. <laughs> He's including everything because he notices everything. Go on the red smoke. It is interesting the way that we're seeing this in fragments. Because that's how you remember things. You remember segments. It's not a continuous through line. You don't remember things sequentially and how you experienced how they happen, you remember them in pieces. It's a really interesting take in how he's going back and remembering bits and pieces. Sound here. Oh my god. Oh shit. Oh there it is. Oh that's Oh my god literally him against the entire battalion. So oh, cool how we didn't start hearing voices until now. It was just Foley. Holy shit. shit. What? Oh my god. He said they didn't know how many of them there were. performance from Damian Lewis right now. I want you to take these prisoners back to Battalion CP. Get yourself cleaned up. Drop your ammo. What? Drop your ammo. No more target practice. Got 11 right now, sir. Okay. You drop a prisoner, the rest will jump you. I want all prisoners back at Battalion CP yeah. alive. Smart man. Saw the kid getting a little trigger happy. <sighs> they got me. You believe that? <laughs> you believe I said that? I love that he's just more annoyed than anything. 
Then they hit us with their 88 zeroed in on this crossroad. Now, we were lucky, though. Only 22 wounded. Hmm. Lucky. Yeah, it's an interesting way to characterize it. I get it, but it's not the word you use looking at that particular tableau. Oh, what a shot. 22 wounded, huh? One killed. Who? Dukeman. Mm. Hey, you're looking at two full companies of SS out there. About 50 dead, probably another 100 wounded. So you took them Seven all down. back in the regimental cage, plus a whole string of them up there. That's not bad for Dukeman. It's not insignificant. Yeah. You got a drink of water? <laughs> yeah, it's water. <laughs> OK. Major Horton's dead. I'm moving you up to executive officer, second battalion. Well, I know I could handle them in the field, sir. That's right, Dick. Damn right. You're a solid tactician and a good leader. Don't worry about administration. Absolutely. Oh, does he have to leave his men? Hey, Dick! Finish your novel oh, yet? Beautiful transition. It's a lot of homework. And I thought executive officer was supposed to be a fun job. <laughs> All that for two pages, huh? Two perfect pages. Pegasus. Speed is the key. Keep moving and lead the way. Dick. Easy's in good hands. Hard to let go. Yeah. Yeah, right. You have men's lives in your hands that you don't just turn that off. Yeah. Are we sure on the intelligence of this? Why don't we ask Moose when he gets back? Yeah, it's not your job anymore. Yeah, I can't imagine from the shock to the system of going from active combat to sitting at a desk. Especially for someone like him, who's always the first into action. Welcome back, sir. Good to be back. 506 at the 101st Airport. Never thought I'd be so glad to see a bloody yank. <laughs> Moose Heiliger. That's me, sir. God bless you, my man. This is interesting. At the beginning of the episode, we were cutting between him at the desk and his memories of action. Now it's him at the desk, an action that he's not a part of, but can't stop thinking about. Moose Heiliger and the American 101st. I've done the Red Devils a great service, yeah. Yeah. making it possible for us to return and fight the enemy on another day. Yeah. <laughs> Train your new platoon leaders. And trust your non-coms. Halt! It's Moose! Halt! Hold your fire! Oh. Friendly fire? I'm sorry, sir. I'm so sorry. I didn't know. Jesus Christ. Where are you from, trooper? Why over, sir? You're a long way from home, Private. Yeah. We didn't know what to do. Yeah, well, you oughta. You know, you are officers, you are grown-ups, you oughta know. All right, let's go. Come on, move it. Nothing like a... Oh, Jesus. Got a blood on his hand. Nothing like a dressing down when you already feel bad enough. The fact that Winters didn't immediately chew him out, but understood. He still has only 65% strength on most of those are replacements. Jesus. There's a Sergeant Garnier here to see you. Look what the train brought in. Hey, the daredevil. Hey, Gonorrhea. <laughs> well, I just went AWOL from the hospital to get back here, sir. I hope that's not going to cause you a problem. Would you care if it did? <laughs> a bit, sir. Touche. Got a letter for you here from Moose. Lieutenant Heiliger, sir. It's recovering, but it's gonna be a long haul. Thanks, Bill. As long as he's recovering. So I hear there's, uh, it's gonna be a football game. Those chumps in the 5 0 deuce, is that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Christmas Day. Great. Oh, gotta have some fun on Christmas. <laughs> well, I guess now this is gonna be 20. What's that, a piece of paper? I don't wanna see another piece of paper. <laughs> What are you telling me? You, my friend, are headed to Paris. City of light. That's a 48 hour pass. It's been decided that you need a little dose of civilization. <laughs> Gotta be reminded what you're fighting for, that there is life outside of war. Transition. 
transition. Flawless transitions. My God. Yeah, he can't escape it. Monsieur Monsieur, c'est le terminus. Le train s'arrête ici, on doit tous descendre. Praise the lighting on this series till the end of the last episode because it's just spectacular. Mm. When was the last time he got to take a hot, quiet bath? Mm. I'm John Wayne. The costume department set me up with these great navy whites. Dude. I'm trying to watch this. I've seen this movie 13 times, okay? Well, I haven't, so shut up. Yeah, seriously. Let the rest of us enjoy it. Well, Don, I was at home in Tonawanda, but then Hitler started this whole thing, so now I'm here. <laughs> How'd you make out in crabs? Not so bad. Huh? Hey. Shut up, shut up. What are you gonna do with all that dough? Blow most of it in Paris as soon as possible. <laughs> Hey, Buck. You don't look. How are you feeling? Oh, it's just a little. I'll be all right when I've I seen this before. He takes the visor, so he starts. Buck. He's not watching the movie. He looks terrible. Yeah, he's lost down the same mental rabbit hole that Winters just was. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Come on. To the, you can't do that to the Duke. Elements of the 1st and the 6th SS Panzer Division have broken through in the Ardennes Forest. All officers report to respective HQs. All passes are canceled. Oh. Oh. Love that we haven't actually focused on Compton. Anytime he's been in frame, he's been slightly out of focus because he looks like hell. Sir, we have a problem. Colonel Strayer has not yet returned from some wedding that he's attending in London. We're going to the front here, and our CO isn't even in the same damn country. You have a bigger problem, Lieutenant Dyke. You have men returning to action without proper cold weather clothing and not enough ammo. Well, that's not promising. What about socks, Junior? You need four minimum. Feet, hands, neck, balls, and your socks, and all. <laughs> The coat. You got no How about got some one. smokes then? Yeah, I, I got some smokes. Oh, now oh, you're talking. Where the hell are we? Sure, we ain't in hell. It's too damn cold. <laughs> you know, there are some, is it some theories or some religions where it's believed that hell is actually a frozen wasteland? I was literally just about to say, poor kitty's freezing, and then you see someone walk by with a bandage over his face. Jesus. Don, give me a look at this. Oh, give me a look at this. Jesus. Don. We're in the middle of something here. Get out. Hey, what happened? They came out of nowhere. They slaughtered us. You gotta get out of here. You just got here. Give me your ammo. Take it. You'll need it. Come on. Oh my god. They're all completely shell shocked. Hey, come hey, on. Who's got ammo? Got ammo? Got ammo? They don't need it anymore. Make a hole! Hey! Make a hole! I got ammo! Oh my god, I thought that was Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon for a second. <laughs> Crowds had tigers, panthers, SPs, stukas. Lions and tigers and bears all mine. Just kept on coming. What's your name, Lieutenant? George Rice, 10th Armor. Good work, son. Winters, always the encourager. 
He always makes sure that people know they're appreciated. Panzer Division is about to cut the road south. That is Jimmy Fallon. Looks like you guys are gonna be surrounded. No. Am I crazy? Oh, I see a sign that says best, best on you. I don't know how they said it, but I think that's the name of the next episode. That's concerning considering you guys said episode six was a tearjerker. Uh. You see a company moved into the woods near Bastonia without any artillery or... Oh my god. Yeah, that that is not comforting. None of that is comforting. No. Farthest from your mind is the thought of falling back. In fact, there's many and all that you dig your hole carefully and deep and wait. <sighs> Forward the light brigade. So, we are officially halfway. And, again, you guys have not given me any spoilers, and I appreciate that, but... This episode very much feels like part one. And again, we're hitting the halfway point here. So this feels like the setup to shit's about to get awful. It's about to, oh God, I'm terrified for the next episode. Also, Neil McDonough, Compton looks awful. I the, There's a thumbnail of him. I think it's not the next episode, but the one after. I just, every single time I see it and I see a shot of him in the title sequence of him pulling off his helmet and dropping his helmet that makes me incredibly nervous but all that is just foreshadowing and setup and again the fact that we ended this episode with them constantly saying we don't have ammunition we don't have winter supplies we're freezing and these men that are leaving saying you shouldn't be here oh god oh god yep yep i'm gonna have tissue box i'm gonna have tissue box ready for the next episode i'm scared but as far as this episode this was a really fascinating episode as far as format. The way that this was filmed, the way that this was done cinematically, as fascinating as it was thematically of talking about leadership. We obviously had in the interviews them talking about, I assume they were talking about Winters and what makes a good leader and then having an episode of him showing again that he is a very good leader, but then the bittersweet nature of, well, that's great, you get promoted, but at the same time, that promotion means he's now sitting behind a desk. And the man who is the first to charge and the first to lead his men is now no longer with them. That's got to be strange. And the way that we experienced his inner life, this episode reminded me a lot of Oppenheimer. And again, it's an odd thing to say because this came out 20-something years ago and Oppenheimer just came out. But narratively, stylistically, sort of first-person perspective-wise... That's what it reminded me of because that opening sequence of him running, we see where that fit in, but that was very first person. It was very much, we were in his head watching the chaos as he's running and then seeing these moments of him trapped in his own head. And you can see what he's thinking about. We keep cutting back to his memories and even the moments when it's not memories, we're cutting back to what he's thinking about. He's never not thinking about Easy Company. He's never not thinking about the men that he cares about and that he is in command of. And this, again, just that reminded me so much of Killian Murphy's performance, but the first person nature of Oppenheimer, just the way that we would cut between him trapped in his own mind with the horrors that are going on in his mind and the way that they would give us these first person visuals of what he's thinking about. That's very much how this felt, that we were very, very much in Winter's mind in this episode. And that was fascinating and very well shot. The transitions in this episode. Oh my God, I'm just nerding out over the cinematography and the transitions in this episode. But I continue to be impressed that every single episode, they find a new way to tell the story. It's a new event. It's a new angle. It's a new way to explore these events and ways to present them to us that don't get stale, that are fresh and new and interesting and hit you differently and make you think in different ways. And so as much as this one wasn't an emotional episode in the way that some others have been, and I imagine the rest will be, it was a really fascinating character study. And props to Damian Lewis. He does a great job of showing a man who has the weight of the world on him and who feels that responsibility and can never let it go. But at the same time, he is... I'm kind of thinking of him as the Ted Lasso in the way that he is a born leader, he understands what each person needs. He understands the power of positivity and positive reinforcement and encouragement and that it's not always helpful to get angry at someone 
nobody here is unaware of the mistakes that they make. Nobody is unaware of the stakes of what they're doing. And so when he got shot at with friendly fire and the man he was with, Moose, I think, gets shot and he sees the kid that did it, he didn't start cursing up a storm at him. He didn't start swearing him because he knows... The kid knows he made a mistake. That mistake is going to haunt him for the rest of his life. It's that guilt is going to eat at him. Even though Moose survived, the fact that he accidentally shot at his own, no one can make him feel worse about that than he already does. And so Winters knew that in that moment, what he needed was someone friendly. He needed a comforting hand because otherwise he wouldn't function. Otherwise he wouldn't be able to get through it. It would eat at him and he wouldn't be able to do his job. So that's something I think that was mentioned in the interviews of what makes a good leader is recognizing what each man needs, what each person needs. And Winters has that ability and it makes him such an incredible leader. And again, hats off to Damian Lewis for his performance. This is just spectacular. Hats off to him, props to him. Again, fantastic episode. And I will continue to nerd out about the cinematography. Again, the transitions were great, but I want to say just again, and I will say this until I'm blue in the face, the lighting in this series is top notch. And I have complained about this in other shows, and this is a common complaint. And I don't know if this is a more recent issue because I'm looking at the era of this and the, the comparison I always make is Helm's Deep, but lighting at night, it's been such a complaint in recent years that shows and movies don't light well for night scenes to the point that you can't see anything. It drives me crazy. I have done so many reactions on this channel where when I'm editing them, I'm cranking up the brightness so that people can actually see what I'm reacting to. That's been a common issue. I personally would always, every time, rather suspend my disbelief slightly more and see what's happening than be sitting here squinting at the screen trying to figure out what's happening. And I love the way that they use light in this series, particularly at night, because when you need to see, you do. And they use that trick of very cold tone lighting. It simulates moonlight. It gives you the sense that it is nighttime, but you can still see. It's really that simple. But the way that they use lighting and then don't use lighting, the way that they use silhouetting, the way that they use shadows, the way that... You can't see things sometimes the way that that moment with Winters in Paris when he's just silhouetted and you can't see his face clearly, that's so symbolic. That's a visual representation of the darkness that he feels within himself and the way that they do that. It's just, it's so masterful. It's so spectacular. And I will rave about it until the end of this series and probably afterwards. And I will probably compare other movies and shows to this series. Now that I have another example on top of Helm's Deep to use for excellent lighting at night, again, I will rave about it until I'm blue in the face. I will continue to appreciate the cinematography of this. It just, it hasn't lapsed. There is no moment in this series where the quality has dropped. And props to Tom Hanks. This is a great episode. I didn't realize he had directed any of this and that was really, really well done. So... I think that's all I have to say. If I forgot anything, I apologize. If I remember later, I'll record something and pop it in. But that's it for episode five. I am terrified for episode six. There will be tissues ready. So when that comes, I hope you guys join me. But for now, please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this episode, on the season up until this point. I love reading all of your guys' comments. Redder is better, so hit what may or may not be a big red subscribe button depending on your browser, and check me out on Patreon for the full-length version of this reaction, as well as all of my other content. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, then the full-length versions of this entire series are already available on Patreon. Links to my Instagram and other socials are in the description box below, and with all of that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you, and I will see you on the next one.